Welcome to the final topic of the acids and bases unit. This is topic four, the brunsted lowry theory of acids and bases. The following will be very important to understand as we go through this. All poodles are dogs, but not all dogs are poodles. <laughs> so let's have a look at exactly what I'm talking about. So far in this unit, we've been looking at the Arrhenius theory of acids and bases, and only the Arrhenius theory. This was the theory that said that acids give off H plus when you dissolve them in water, bases give off a OH minus when you dissolve them in water. In order for this to work, it has to be dissolved in water, and acids strictly give off H plus, bases strictly go off, give off OH minus. However, this is not the entire story. The bronsted lowry theory, I'm sorry, the brunsted lowry theory, I have to make sure I pronounce it properly, um, was arrived at by these two gentlemen here. Now, they did not know each other, but they published their findings so close together in different publications, they both got credit for it. Kind of like when two people discover a comet uh, within just a few hours of each other, they both are given credit for the discovery. So, Bronsted and Lowry. So, Here's the basic idea. <laughs> See what I did there? Basic. Uh, so funny. Anyway, a hydrogen ion is a proton. And the reason for this is a hydrogen atom is just simply a proton with an electron zipping around outside of it. So how do you turn it into a positive ion? Well, you get rid of the electron. And when the electron is gone, all that remains is a proton. So we're going to use the term proton and hydrogen ion interchangeably because they're the same thing. In fact, many times it's called a naked proton because it no longer is clothed by the electron orbiting around it. So here is the brunsted lowry I'm sorry, the brunsted lowry theory of acids and bases. An acid, by this definition, is anything that loses a hydrogen ion in a reaction. This is called a proton donor. And a base is anything that gains a hydrogen ion in a reaction. Notice hydroxide is not part of this at all. So a base is a proton acceptor. So the acid gives the hydrogen ion to the base. So, for example, in this reaction... NH3 becomes NH4 plus, and HCl becomes Cl minus. So who lost the H plus and who gained it? Well, since HCl became Cl minus, HCl is the proton donor in this reaction, the acid. And since NH3 became NH4 plus, that makes NH3 the proton acceptor which means that the H plus was lost by the HCl and gained by the NH3 in the formation of the products. In this reaction, HBr becomes just Br minus. So HBr lost an H plus, meaning HBr is the acid, the proton donor. H2O becomes H3O plus which means H2O gained the H+, making it the proton acceptor, or the base. In this reaction, the HNO3 becomes NO3-1. Having lost the H, it is an acid. SO3-2 becomes HSO3-1. Therefore, it is the base. Notice that the acid doesn't just lose the H, it also loses a positive charge. And the base not only gains an H, it also gains a positive charge because it's H plus that's being lost or gained. So as far as the Regents is concerned, that is all that's going to be asked for except they're not going to call it the bronsted lowry definition for some reason in 2000 when they rewrote the core curriculum for New York State. They decided to leave out the name bronsted lowry They'll call it another theory, a different theory, an alternate theory, one theory. But know that when even though they're avoiding the name bronsted lowry that's exactly what they're talking about. Now we get into some more complex issues. Now, if you're just taking a Regents class, you can stop right here. This is for more advanced classes only. When an acid loses a hydrogen, it forms a conjugate base. 
And when a base gains a hydrogen, it forms a conjugate acid. And the degree to which either the forward change happens or the reverse change is favored will give you an idea of how strong the acid or base is based on this Ka value here. For example, Hi ionizes completely into H plus plus I minus one. Since the ionization is complete, Ka is very large. The same thing happens with HBr, HCl, HNO3, and to the most extent, H2SO4. The ionization is complete. But as Ka gets smaller, the ionization of the acid becomes less and less. NH3 doesn't ionize really to any significant degree at all to NH2 minus 1. Now, if you want to get the reverse change, these are strong acids because they ionize fully into their conjugate base. However, these acids are very weak because they do not ionize fully into their conjugate base. Instead, what happens is the base will turn into its conjugate acid. So the top acids are the strong acids and the bottom bases are the strong bases. Pretty cool, huh? So here's how it works. The acid turns into the conjugate base by giving off its hydrogen. And the base will gain that hydrogen to turn back into a conjugate acid. Notice there's a double arrow here. That represents equilibrium, a system where both reactions are possible, forward and reverse. Now, in the examples I gave you here, I only gave you a single arrow. That's the forward change. Now we're going to change it up a little bit by adding that double arrow. As Ka increases, acid strengths get stronger, conjugate base strength decreases. Strong acids, therefore, have weak conjugate bases. If Hi ionizes fully into I minus 1, that means it's a very rare thing that an I minus 1 will be able to gain the H plus back. Amphiprotism. Sometimes an acid can both gain or lose an H, in which case it's not just an acid, it's also a base. For example, HSO4- minus has an H that it can lose, but HSO4- minus can also gain H+. Plus. So if it has hydrogen and a negative charge, it can either lose an H to become its conjugate base, or it can gain an H to become its conjugate acid. This is also true of things that form coordinate covalent bonds, such as NH3. NH3 can lose an H to become NH2, or it can gain an H to become NH4. So anything that has hydrogen and negative or can form a coordinate covalent bond can act as either an acid or a base, depending on the situation. Acids have H's to lose. Bases have a negative charge, so they can gain H plus, right? Plus and minus. Or they can undergo coordinate covalent bonding. So in this reaction, HSO4- minus is becoming H2SO4. Therefore, HSO4- minus in this reaction is acting as a base. The HCl acts as the acid. It gives the HSO4- minus the H that it gained. When HSO4- minus gains a hydrogen, it becomes its conjugate acid, H2SO4. When HCl loses its H, it forms the conjugate base, Cl-. minus. However, HSO4- minus also can lose an H. When HSO4- minus turns into SO4-2, minus it loses an H, meaning that it acts as an acid. The H2O picks up that H to form H3O+. When H2O gains the H, the base turns into its conjugate acid. HSO4- turns into its conjugate base.
And because HSO4- minus can act as either a base or an acid, depending on what you're reacting it with, <laughs> it's amphiprotic. Now, this gets into great a lot more detail, but typically to get into more detail than this, you're going to need to take a college-level course in chemistry. But now you know the fundamental basics behind, <laughs> there I go again, <clears throat> the basics. Wow. Well, now that you've got your acids and bases covered, <laughs> there's no end to the chemistry jokes. Well, yeah, there is an end to the chemistry jokes because I'm about to end the video. Thanks for playing along, folks. Bye.